Okay, so today we have In My Eyes by Minor Threat. I don't know what that start was, but we're going to keep it. Um, Minor Threat. Uh, I did a video about a month ago or something about my favorite albums, and I included Minor Threat's complete discography. Um, and a couple people asked, you know, you should review a Minor Threat song. And since then, I've been thinking, you know, I should. I, it's, I haven't listened to Minor Threat, you know, a lot since, like, high school, uh, especially with headphones and, you know, in this kind of setting. I've never done that. But, um... Yeah, so I said, let's do In My Eyes, which I think is one of, if not the their uh, longest song. There it is. Uh, at just 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we're going to get into this today. Talk about it after. Uh, just going to be me and my element here, I guess. Uh, and let's just go. <laughs> the laugh at the start. Like I said, it's been so long since I've listened to a Minor Threat song like this, uh, you know, with headphones on and everything, you know, getting the full experience. Uh, <laughs> uh, Friggin', I just love Ian MacKay's intense, obviously his intense vocals. And I mean, just to talk about intensity, uh, I know that Ian and uh, Henry Rollins are best friends. I guess you would say best friends. And uh, yeah, I mean, both of those guys are obviously very intense guys. Uh, and I don't know, it's just like, if they walk into the room, you kind of sit up straighter, stand up straighter, whatever. Uh, I don't know. You just got to be like, because it's not even that, you know, they're going to beat you up or whatever. It's just like, I don't know. They're just intelligent guys. And they're just, I don't know. They just deserve, they don't even deserve respect. They just get respect. I don't know. That's what it feels like to me anyway, that, you know, I, you know, if, I don't know if that's how I'm trying to say, but I, yeah, they're, they're just friggin' uh, intense, I guess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they just show that um, just, I don't know, just, how they are anyway um getting on with this uh friggin i for you know the intro obviously you know how it just starts off and then about 40 seconds it slows down and then the guitar comes in and i just love that you know raw aggressive 
uh, the power that they have. I mean, the whole, the whole band was just so powerful. Uh, not just Ian's, you know, <laughs> I love as well, you know, obviously with how it's, he's going back and forth with somebody here, uh, you know, about, I guess it's about drugs. I mean, it was what I've learned here. Uh, <laughs> and how he's talking about, you know, you tell me you like the taste, you just need an excuse and it goes on and on. But I like how he's using, you know, for the voice of, you know, the other person, how he kind of, changes his voice a little bit and how then how he screams his part um you just i just love that dynamic uh and then uh, you know the whole point you know did you you know uh, did you fucking get it and then it goes on uh where's the next part that i loved um um, um, um you know at least i'm uh effing trying i don't want to swear too much what the f have you done it's just like oh my god he's just so he's just so ready to go i mean it's <laughs> just nuts um, but again, I have to say, uh, with the, uh, personnel here, Ian McKay, obviously, like I said, on lead vocals, I mean, those are some distinct vocals, and of course, he'd go on to be in Fugazi, uh, I mean, just a great, you know, I don't know, great voice, but, you know, just a, a distinct voice, um, and just, you know, a powerful, aggressive, raw, emotional voice, um, anyway, Lyle Pressler, I want to say, on guitar and backing vocals, and again, I love the guitar work, obviously, you know, that starts off the song, and then, like I said, about 40 seconds, uh, he starts off the song kind of again, uh, and then Ian comes in. Um, anyway, Brian Baker on bass and backing vocals. Now, of course, Brian Baker uh, went on to be the bassist of Bad Religion. So, I mean, I love that he was in, you know, Bad Religion and Minor Threat, you know, uh, two bands I like a lot. Um, anyway, and then Jeff Nelson on drums. Now, Jeff Nelson, I forgot how ridiculous the drums were in this, how fast, how, again, aggressive. Uh, just, I mean... I loved, you know, I, I, I yeah, so I, I just forgot how good they were. Um, so I just loved uh, Jeff here a lot. And uh, <laughs> kind of, you know, obviously the backbone of the song. I mean, just, again, you you can't miss it. Uh, just like, I mean, and again, with the bass, the, all the instruments here, it's just so, you know, pronounced. Uh, I just loved it. And I mean, you know, not just, you know, if you want to talk about instruments, so was Ian's voice, I guess, if you, I guess, if you want to call that an instrument as well. Um, so anyway, my God. Um is there anything else I need to say about the song? Uh, again, I just love, and again, that's one thing, you know, listening listening to this band in high school, you know, being, you know, into punk really in high school, um, especially, I, you know, to talk about Minor Threat, you know, because this is a video about Minor Threat. Um, Ian obviously uh, has been a um, straight edge. He's straight edge. There it is, you know, anti-drug, anti-alcohol, all that stuff, which, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I, I guess I'm straight edge. I mean, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that, anything like that. Um, and back in high school, you know, obviously there's a lot of people that, you know, not a lot of people, but some people obviously, you know, they drink, they smoke, whatever it is. Um, and it's not like a feeling of like you, you know, uh, somebody who doesn't drink or smoke, you know, I feel like I'm better than anybody. It's just because I don't really care. But again, I just like, you know, like Ian's kind of like, I feel like, you know, I'm relating to Ian, I guess, in a way. Um, but again, I'm not going to go up to somebody and, you know, a certain argument, whatever. Um, but again, I just love, you know, when I would listen to this and be like, you know, and again, you talk, you know, you talk about a, a lot of other minor threat songs that were again about, you know, being anti-drug and everything. And I just love that. Uh, cause he, I don't know, I didn't hear too much of that, especially the punk scene really. Um, and I just love that Ian went that way and that he was so passionate and he's still so passionate cause he's, you know, he's not dead or anything. Um, he's still so passionate about, you know, uh, you know, think these topics and everything. Um, and obviously you can hear the intensity in his voice and how impassioned he is. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess that's what I'm just saying, you know, uh, and again, to this day, you know, I, again, I'm not, you know, I don't put it out there that I'm straight edge, but again, I, I basically am, I guess, because I haven't drank or smoked or anything like, anything like that. Just doesn't interest me, I guess. Anyway, uh, just like um, Ian, I guess. Um, so anyway, uh, I mean, he had that song. I mean, again, just to talk about, <laughs> go back to this, um, you know, the song, I Drink Milk. I mean, it's just, again, because, you know, he doesn't drink alcohol. It's just like, I just love, you know, that kind of spirit. Anyway. Enough about this stuff. Uh, there is an about on Genius, which I usually, you know, read the abouts on Genius. So here it is. In My Eyes is the ninth song on the Minor Threat self-titled EP. Uh, and again, the songs are, were so short. It's just, I just love it. I just love the band. Anyway, the Washington, D.C. band, known for their straight-edge, sober lifestyle, created many songs about their disdain for drug use, drug culture, and drug users. Uh, <laughs> this song can be included in that category. I guess it can be. Um, the lyrics depict one side of a heated argument between two people over how they each perceive each other uh, in a heated battle. This is written weird. With one being sober and the other not. 
Uh, the rage in the vocal delivery cannot be denied and contributed to the band's image as defiantly unapologetic artists forcefully resisting the pop culture trend to glamorize drug use and, you, and young people and artists. So, I mean, again, it's just, you know, you, you hear so many, you know, artists. I mean, so many artists. I mean, uh, you look at the people. I mean, you can hardly see, but I mean, there's Jim Morrison, Kurt Cobain, uh, uh, you know, the Smiths. I mean, they didn't really gl glamorize, I guess, drinking and you know, drugs a lot, but I mean, Jim Morrison and Kirk Cobain, I mean, yeah, they kind of did. Um, but yeah, so it's just that, you know, that just comes to mind where it's always about, you know, uh, kind of, you know, people, you know, do, I don't, I don't know where, how to say it, you know, people do drugs. I mean, big, you know, uh, big time rock stars. I mean, a lot of them were on drugs. A lot of them drank alcohol. A lot of them died that way, obviously, like, you know, with, uh, Kurt, uh, I mean, he had a heroin problem. I mean, Jim was an alcoholic. I mean, yeah, so I just love how the minor threat here is just like, you know, on the other side of the fence. I mean, completely on the other, <laughs> not the other side of the fence um, and how they resist this and they resist the pulp, uh, the uh, popular trends and uh, how they wrote so many songs about that. It's just, I don't know. I just love this other side of the coin because, um, again, I was kind of on that side. I mean, as a kid and even now um, where it's just like, I, you know, I'm not interested in, you know, uh, drugs or whatever. It's just so, yeah, I just love how this, you know, when I found this band and, you know, that they kind of, you, you know, I felt like they were speaking to me. Anyway, it's, it's kind of cringy in my mind, but anyway, uh, <laughs> but it was really uh, relatable and it still is today. Um, so, I mean, with the first verse here, there is an, uh, what's it called? An annotation from Genius. Um, so it says, Eden was referring to uh, the culture of doing drugs, specifically smoking cigarettes. In this case, every second line uh, following the first is a poor excuse for using drugs uh, that people often use. And the next line is Ian calling them out on their BS hypocrisy, uh, often imposed because of peer pressure for seeking acceptance. And again, it's just like, I mean, again, because I'm not a smoker, I've never been a smoker. Uh, I, I know people who are, and I'm obviously, you know, a lot of people would, um, you know, have excuses and such. And I, I just love how Ian's just ripping the, this person apart uh, and how he's saying, you know, it's just like, <laughs> it's just, I mean, you know, you just change for the same you, and then, you know, you just need the proof and he's just, I don't know, he's ripping them apart. He has no, um, no feelings towards this person of like, you know, no empathy. Uh, I just love it. It's so great. Uh, or sympathy. What word am I looking for? I'll put it in the video. Anyway, it's it's four in the morning. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, anyway, with the hook here, it's in my eyes. It's in my eyes. And now he's, you know, yelling this very fast. I uh, really love that as well. Um, so there is the annotation here for this, for the, the hook. Uh, Ian sees everything these people are doing, all hypocrisies of these people uh, shown in his eyes. And he knows that it's not what they think it is. Um, so again, it's kind of like him saying, you know, they know it's, you know, they know smoking is not good for them. I mean, I think everybody knows that by now. Um, you know, drinking alcohol, you know, doing harder drugs, you know, cocaine, whatever, heroin, crack, whatever it is. I mean, I think the people doing that know it's not the great thing, you know, not a great thing for their body and not a great thing in the long run. Um, but I mean, it's just, I mean, it's an addiction, I guess, basically. And, you know, uh, and how he's saying kind of like, uh, it doesn't look that way to me in my eyes, you know, that like, you know, that's a great thing to do or whatever, uh, drugs at all. Um, and then, you know, go on, you know, you tell me that nothing matters. You're just effing scared. Uh, and this, what is this? The second verse. Yeah. I just love this verse so much because he's just, he's going in even harder on the, um, you know, this person, you tell me that I'm better. You just hate yourself. It's just <laughs> so deep. These lines are just cutting through like a friggin' knife through hot butter. You tell me that you, uh, that you like her. You just wish you did. You tell me that I make no difference. <laughs> At least I'm effing trying. What the F have you done? So this whole thing of, you know, you tell me, you know, I don't make any difference. Basically, you know, I'm just another cog in the machine. We're all just cogs in the machine here. Um, you know, you know, the whole thing of like, you know, well, who cares what you do, you know, kind of a thing, you know, I, I so what I do drugs, um, and you don't, who, you know, what difference do you make? And, and you know, Ian saying, you know, at least I'm trying, what have you done? It's just, uh, I just, uh, it's just, again, he's ripping this person apart. I just love it so much. And, um, I mean, my God, and then the hook one more time. And then the outro, of course, which kind of reminds me of, um, uh, suicidal tendencies with, uh, what the hell is that song called? institutionalized by suicidal tendencies where at the end of the song, you know, uh, he, he just says, uh, probably doesn't matter. I'll probably just run over by a car anyway, or something like that. Uh, how it's just, I don't know how the outro just is, uh, you can just hear the singer clearly. And, uh, I don't know. It just reminded me of that when he says, you know, 
I'll just get run over by a car anyway. And that, but anyway, here he just says, you know, thanks a lot, friends, uh, with that sarcasm in his voice. Um, and again, I guess, you know, talking about, you know, thanks a lot, friends, I guess he's talking about, you know, fake friends uh, or snakes, as it says here on uh, Genius. Um, you know, just those two-faced friends that you have. And uh, again, how Ian, he just doesn't put up with the bullshit, I guess. He, he never did. He never has. He never will. Um, and he'll just tell it like it is, basically. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Again, how we talked about earlier, how you kind of stand up straighter or something. If I mean, if you're in a room with Ian McKay, I mean, you're probably a fan or something. Um, but again, how you just kind of, you know, uh, you know, freaking kind of watch your P's and Q's, as they say. And uh, just, I don't know, just because he has that intensity, at least for me anyway. And again, he's just an intelligent fella. And uh, I just wouldn't want to slip up in front of him. I don't know. It, that's just what it feels like to me. And again, maybe this is just uh, a me thing. Um, but <laughs> yeah, he's just, I don't know. He's just somebody that I don't want to, you know, disappoint. He's somebody that I don't want to make mad or something. Anyway, that's just what comes to mind anyway uh, for me. So anyway, uh, I'm happy that people requested this, you know, talking about minor threat. Because I haven't talked about minor threat uh I guess ever to people. I mean, I guess, you know, through the internet or whatever. Um, and I haven't listened to them in a long time, but I probably will start listening to them again because of this review. Um, but yeah, I just love, you know, their, their passion, their stance. Uh, they were great. And again, I love how, uh, Brian went on to be in bad religion and how Ian would have gone to have more success as well. Uh, and how he's again, best friends with Henry Rollins is uh, like I've already said many times, uh, to, uh, just crazy, crazy guys. I mean, not crazy, I, you know, just, I don't know, again, just intense fellas. And, um, anyway, uh, I guess that's all I got to say. This video is so long. I mean, again, this song was only two minutes and 49 seconds and I don't know. Anyway, uh, I talked a lot. So anyway, if you're still here, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. Really appreciate all the support. And again, uh, you know, hopefully I get uh, this room in order soon. So anyway, thanks again for the support. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.